What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, you are watching TWA Motorsports and today, yes, guys, we may, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to title this video because I'm not sure what's going to happen, but today we are going to see if we can get this thing on the road. Okay. So in the last video on this thing, guys, you saw me put the, br the, uh, the brakes back together, get the rear end back in. We got everything tightened back up. We put the wheels off the 55 on it and look, while those wheels work great in the front, 18 by seven up there, no issues whatsoever. We needed different wheels for the back. So what I did was I also robbed the brake or the wheels off the 55, which is what you see here. The problem is guys, it's just too big. Um, the tire's too big, the wheel's too big. And um, I, you know, I've just been back and forth on what I'm gonna do here. We know it's gonna be a while before the 55's on the road. And so I, didn't want to buy a whole set of wheels. So here's what I did. I bought the exact same wheel in an eight and a half. So this is an eight, uh, this is a 20 by 10. This is a 20 by eight and a half. I actually like the size. I think there was some um, confusion. I posted this on Facebook and people were like, yeah, I don't like the big wheel. I like the big wheel. Um, I just think it looks good. That's just my opinion. So um, I've got another set. Uh, except it's an eight and a half and you can see the difference in height Not only that, but it actually comes in an inch So we lose about an inch on both sides an inch and a half. So it goes in three quarters of an inch further and It's three quarters of an inch more narrow So we actually are centering it up where it was already at with the 20 by 10 by going in three quarters of an inch and The outside being three quarters of an inch shorter Hopefully that makes sense. I'll list these in the description down below, guys. But uh, here's what else I did. I went on eBay and I've used this place before. I don't love those lug nuts. Obviously, those look kind of crappy. So I got these billet or billet bullet style, which I think look really sharp. Um, I don't think you're going to see a lot of them because this wheel has a really deep um, opening in it. But um, I do have them. So here's the goal. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, let's talk about tire size. So this tire size is what? 275, 35, 20. I went to a 255, 35, 20. This one's a little shorter too. So not only is it narrower, it's shorter. So let's put this thing up in here. Let's get uh, five of these guys started on it. I'm gonna go also and take these gross lug nuts off the front. And um, then I think, guys, I'm hoping we could set this thing down. We can move some stuff around here in the shop and we can take this thing for its first drive since I have owned it. Now look, I made it maybe um, a mile down the road and back and it was terrible. And in the last video, I, I showed you guys it outside. I actually went down the road about a half a mile, but the problem was is it was rubbing and I didn't want to risk tearing up a tire or a wheel. And so it just, it, it I wasn't gonna do that. So anyway, let's get these on and give it a shot. I already tell you without a doubt, it's a better fit. Let's get it on the ground and get these things torqued. Let's see if we can set it down. It's gonna look good. Woo, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and torque these to 100 foot-pounds uh, all the way around. I like to go over them twice, so I go through the pattern, you know, alternate sides. I go through that twice, just kind of what I do. And then we're gonna move some stuff out of the way, the golf cart, the dually, jack stands, the jack. We're gonna get it out of the way, and we're gonna give it a shot and see if we can go down the road in it for the first time. Now let me know in the comments what you guys think is gonna happen. Like I said, we went down the road before. Everything was rubbing and bumping, but it was, the first time we went down the road, it was because the brakes hitting the frame. The second time we went down the road, once we got all, all back together, it was the tires rubbing, at least I believe that's what it was. And from the looks of the inner fenders, there was definitely some rubbing. So my question is, does this solve our problem? Can this thing be trusted to drive? I'm telling you, I'm gonna be really disappointed if not. We've got a lot in this now. 
going to really frustrate me. Wind's blowing 90 miles an hour today. It's ridiculous. Um, I think this is a good idea. Look, anytime we're on a maiden voyage, we don't know what could happen. Got a fire extinguisher just in case. Let's see if we can get this thing out of here. We're going to have to kind of Austin powers it out of the of that door just because I got a bunch of stuff that I don't want to move. That door actually works now though. made it out of the shop that's a good sign right of course it made it out of the shop before now look guys i have an electric fan on this thing i'm hoping the temp gauge one of the two works um this turns on the fan actually that yeah okay well <sighs> nothing like a maiden voyage Makes me crazy. Makes me crazy to have one of these guys. I don't know why. I mean, I put the time in, we fixed all the stuff the best we could. Those, where those stickers were on the tires really throwing a lot of rocks. Oh, way better on that transition right there. So like right here, when I got onto this road that goes um, the other direction this transition right here is where those old wheels were rubbing really really bad. Let's see Oh, No issues that was our problem Okay, let's uh, let's try to get it up to speed see what happens Nice little bump there No noises Steering's a little loose, in my opinion. Maybe not. Maybe it's just this ginormous wheel. It doesn't act like it's shifting into third. Maybe I'm already in third. Come on, baby. Shift into third. Speedo is not hooked up. Okay, see the temp gauge? It is hooked up because it's climbing. It's got good brakes. Seems like good brakes anyway. Just kind of cruise around the block. Let's see if we can get it up to temperature. There's the one two shift right there. Okay, there's the two three. It's only a three speed, it's a turbo 350 trans. I'm gonna drive it around a little bit with the camera off, guys. So far, so good. We'll watch, I'm gonna watch this temperature. I'm gonna head back towards the house just in case. But, um,. Feels like it pulls a little bit to the right when I hit the brakes. But look, we didn't mess with the fronts. The fronts are what was on the Mustang 2 front end. Just got back. I drove this thing for, I don't know, probably 20 minutes. No overheating, no issues whatsoever. That is what I would call a win. Now, we got some creaks and whatnot. Um, look, none of the gauges work other than that temp gauge that's aftermarket down under the dash. Um, <laughs> nothing works, but it's a start, you know? Uh, it steers good. 
it seems to drive good i'm gonna start to like kind of this is kind of how i do things i start to loop out a little further and a little further but i've got some more stuff planned on this uh that i think we're gonna start in this video so i'm gonna maybe put some street miles on it here around town and then uh let's get to the rest of what i want to do now one of the next things i want to do and you guys may have noticed this bolt missing but i started to do this process a while back i actually bought some bumperettes and they're side specific i believe I just think these cars look good with the bumperettes and the and the teeth. So, um, look, I kind of got ripped on this deal because I bought I bought the teeth from a website, um, actually a Facebook group, and they look like absolute trash. Um, this guy rechromes them, and the factory he rechromed these, and these look okay. Um, these are usable they're not perfect but they're you know they're decent okay the ones he sent me for the teeth they look terrible and he didn't send me any brackets so i have no way to connect them uh i mean i could probably come up with something to connect them but i'm just not happy with the way they look and they sell repops of those so uh but one of the problems i ran into is when i took this bolt out if you'll notice there is uh it's really short and it doesn't have enough to go through this guy so i went to my local parts store and this is just a carriage bolt really and so this carriage bolt goes in this goes into that and uh, that's how they fasten um or at least i think i'm gonna give it a shot and we're gonna see what happens it may or may not want to stay but uh, i think i'm gonna have to get my creeper and get on the bottom side of this thing Actually, that needs to, the bumper needs to come up. Then it goes through. But I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I may have to jam something back behind this to keep that bolt started in the hole while I uh, get this all snug down. I don't know. We'll just have to see how it works as it goes in. I went in there and got it started, and there's like a nylon, a nylon washer, and these are side specific. You'll kind of see the contour of the bumper in them. But uh, there's a nylock washer and then a steel washer. I'll just kind of see how they fit as I get them snugged up. snug down and the shape looks good I don't want them to be crooked though I don't know that we can do much with that they kind of sit on the bumper where they want It's pretty good it's pretty square it kind of throws you off because they're kind of tilted i think that looks good definitely looks I, like i said i just like the look of that on the front end of these things i don't know some people may like this kind of smooth front end look but um i don't know i like this get them too tight where they start to like deform but yeah let's stick the other one on there now i got them both on there and they do look better um this is what the teeth look like guys so let's see if i can i don't know if that's a right or a left i think it's a that may be the other side or i may have a no that's the right i think that's this side They're different shapes, so all five are a different shape. But that's what we would be looking at. Maybe this is, there we go, okay. So you can see how these fit into place, but I don't think the bracketry will hold it is the problem. 
Um, these are supposed to have a stud that screw into the end of them. And it looks as though they're supposed to be a bridge across the top for it to go into also. And we don't have that. So I don't know if that's a piece that comes off the grill. I need to look at one that's hooked up and figure out how exactly they go together. But I mean, you can see how much, I, I just think it really makes the front end pop on these cars when it has all the chrome. Um, the older I get, the more chrome I want, I guess. But for now, we're just gonna deal with what we got. Um, like I said, I don't have the, the brackets. See how this is, that's not right either. Um, I don't know if it's missing some screws. It's not fitting like it's supposed to, that's for sure. Um, but that's, you know, this right here, the piece, this isn't the one that goes there, but this right here would cover that so we could go ahead and put the other bolts in because chances are we're going to have to, yeah, see, that's going to have to be loosened up, pulled up, and fit back in correctly because it's drooping because it doesn't have these. Now, one of the last things I want to do, I'm getting ready to show you, but I will tell you guys, I took the door panel off and put this piece of trim back on like it was supposed to be. And the reason I took the door panel off, normally these are held on with clips, but my painter gave me some screw on clips that go through and there's a nut on the back. So I had to take the panel off to get that on, but it's on. And I figured out why my window isn't rolling down. It's because the door pull screws are too long. So I'm going to address that in a future video. But the next thing I want to do um, actually the last thing I want to do in this video is I want to get the teeth in this. Now I'm not happy with the teeth that I got. Um, but look, it's what I have, but I was missing some pieces. I'm going to go grab this stuff and I want to show you what I was missing and what my painter was able to help me with. And then some other stuff we're going to have to actually make teeth on these things. There's actually five different ones. Okay. So there's rights, there's lefts, there's middle. Okay, this is actually a left one here, I believe. Yeah, it is. Let's see how it's angled. Uh, but I can still show you in this area how these things fasten. So look guys, this is all I got and really shoddy work. Um, but I did not get these. And so this is the bracket that holds this up against the grill like this, okay? It's shaped like the inside of the grill and it positions these. Now, there's another little L-shaped or Z-shaped bracket that goes up top. I Mine does not have that piece. I'm not going to concern myself with that. Uh, there's a lot of guys that put multiple teeth, like a bunch of teeth in these. And when they do that, I'm seriously doubting they anchor in the top. I actually don't think it needs it because this thing is shaped like the grill. So it sets in there. But okay, so that was one of the things I was missing. My painter actually had a set of those, which is good. Uh, cause he has a bunch of old cars. The next thing I was missing was the center stud came in a couple of them, which is good and bad. The good is that because I got a center stud, I was able to figure out what the thread pitch and size was. The downside is nobody sells a standard stud. So I'm going to have to make, uh, studs for this. Now I only have to make three, but you can see, I bought a piece of all thread and I'm just going to trim these out. And obviously the end of it's going to be all boogered up. We're going to have to chase the threads on it, but you can see what I've got now is the ability to put these in place. Now, the other thing I'm going to be doing, and I'll do this off camera probably, is I'm going to coat these with some like POR 15. I clean them up with a wire wheel and they look way better, but just to, as some added protection, I'm going to do that. But I'm going to use these studs for the sizing of how long I need to make uh, the new ones. And then I also bought nuts and washers because the one, the bolt, like you see, I pulled out here, it's actually not the same thread. So I'm going to have to have, um, the size that actually fits this. So that's my next step. So we've got some work to do off camera here, but like I said, guys, you're not going to be able to, um, put these on the wrong side or they're going to look really weird. If you do, this one's actually one of these, this side. So it sets like that and it doesn't set right because the bolts in there. The other thing I noticed is from the factory, the two pieces of the grill, the outer section where the turn light is and this were fastened. And this person that I bought this car from didn't fasten those. So I also got some bolts to go in that area as well. So I actually may put those in first because once I take the carriage bolt out of the front, I think it's going to get, um, 
I think it's gonna get really loose. Now you'll notice I got one of the teeth in. I also used the little screws I bought to connect those two, the outer and the inner. But this is what I made. Okay, you can see I knocked down the end of each side. And guys, look, put a nut on there before you do that. That actually works as a thread chaser. So now I can go ahead and get all of the teeth in place, but I still have to paint the brackets. So I, and then look, the brackets work like this. There's a longer ear on one and a shorter ear on one. Okay, the long ear goes on the side that it leans towards. So if that makes sense, this longer ear is gonna go on the passenger side and we'd have just the opposite, which is this guy here, that would go on the driver's side. Now, with that being said, the middle one, guys, the grill that I looked at um, and got these from, it didn't have one in the middle, or at least it didn't show one. So I don't necessarily know, because there's, I don't have one that's just flat. So I'm wondering if I'm gonna have to trim one of these down in order to use it in the middle, or if the middle just doesn't get one. So we'll just have to see when we get to that point. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and thread these in to the teeth, put the teeth in and have them just setting there. And then obviously, you know, they're not gonna stay. We're gonna to have to come back once these are painted and bolt them on the back side with the nut. Uh, I got some lock washers too, a washer and a lock washer. You wanna make sure that um, the washer that you use obviously won't fall through the hole. And so you can see I'm really close on the nut. So the washer will uh, help fill that void. You can't get a super big nut through the middle of these. So, and I'm, I'm actually, I have to use whatever threads into the back of the teeth. So that's why I didn't go bigger. Uh, you can see I've got some room there, but this is the size that threads into the teeth, so you have to use this. Now you can see I've got all my homemade studs in. Well, I guess I had two of the, the original ones, but uh, these are loose. And the only one that's snug is the middle one. You can see I've got it in there. Guys, I don't think it needs a bracket. And like I said, the grill I looked at last night that he had didn't have that. Now, like I said, we don't have the tie-in to the upper, but I don't necessarily think that we need that. And I'm, like I said, I'm guessing the guys that put the multiple tooth set up so you can buy additional ones and then kind of stack them up. A lot of people like that look. I, I'm not one, I don't necessarily love that look. Um, and this is an aftermarket grill. So things are kind of don't fit as good as they would an original. These are original, these are original. Um, and we're trying to put them on an aftermarket grill. But anyway, I got this one because it's part of the hood latch assembly. I got it in place and it's, as you can see, we're, we're sturdy there. So now all I have to do is, like I said, I'm gonna paint those brackets that go on the back side to hold these outers. And um, we'll step back and take a further look at it. But I just think it looks so much better with the teeth in it. Now I'm gonna coat these with the POR 15 I've got down here. I've got a couple other pieces I'm gonna be coating at the same time, so I figured we'd just knock it out all at once. So once these are coated and dry, I'm gonna let them dry overnight. I'm gonna hang them on a hanger or something, a metal hanger. And uh, once we get them coated and they dry, I think I'll just do one coat, uh, then we will put them on the car and finish it up. I am ready to fasten these down now. Um, I painted these, like I said, with some POR 15. They look way better and they'll hold up. You know, that's what I like about that stuff. Um, but remember, this goes on a certain side. Um, I think this, this piece, so actually this one here would go on the passenger side. Uh, and it's because the grill starts to turn in. Uh, this keeps it nice and square as you're tightening it up. Uh, the middle one doesn't need one so far, and so I'm not going to put one in there. But you can see I've got my nuts and bolts lined up down there. So, guys, we are going to get these on the back, get them fastened down, and um, that should end this project, at least this part on this car. Here we are with it out of the shop. We've actually been driving this thing. We've probably put, I don't know, maybe 75 miles or so on it. You can see it's got some bugs on the front now, but definitely looks a lot better with uh, the teeth in the grill in my opinion and uh we got a few things accomplished we still got a few things to go um there's some issues with it guys but look hey it's drivable and I, the more i drive it the more confidence i get in it it does have a little bit of an antifreeze leak i actually think it's the radiator but um 
like I said, I'm excited about just being able to drive this thing down the road. All of us can pile in it. We do probably need to put some seat belts in it. But if you guys have been enjoying the 54 Chevy stuff, it's really, guys, exciting to me when I can have something that we can all fit in. Like I said, uh, that was the goal uh, when I bought this thing is to have a turnkey driver for the whole family to pile in. We can fit six people in that comfortably and roll down the road. But if you have been enjoying this, please like always smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are not subscribed, you got to go down there, hit that subscribe button. Of course, like always ring that bell notification that will notify you every single time we drop a new video. And Cam, what do they need to do? Subscribe. I already said that. What do they need to stay tuned for? Bingo.